Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's webinar. South is brought to you by the South Metro. Let's see who we got here. We got Brittany Edwards. We got Candace Early, Robert Jones, uh, Nia Jackson McClure, Chef Shell. Look like you're in the right place. Carl Callum. Hello, my friend. Uh, Dr. Lisa William Taylor. Uh, it's two o'clock on the nose. We'll give ourselves about another two or three minutes. Um, in myself, and then I'm going to pin. There we go. All right. A few more people coming in. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is the beginning of our webinar series for the South Metro. For those who don't know what I mean when I say the South Metro, we will talk about that shortly and then we'll get into our webinar. If you don't mind, please uh, drop your the name of your business in the chat. We want to get to know you. Uh, we want to make sure that we are loading up this chat with information. There's going to be great opportunities for uh, Micah to possibly serve you in this capacity. And um, and we want to make sure we are uh, getting your information and make sure you're getting the most out of your relationship with the chamber. All right, 201. We're going to give ourselves about one more minute, and then other folks will come in, and they'll, they'll catch up. No problem. I'm going to put in the chat, if you, let me see, Mike William Taylor is with Paychecks. All right, thank you for joining us. And let us know what side of town you're in. Everyone, you, if you've been in Atlanta more than 10 minutes, you realize that Atlanta is, it's pretty, it's pretty big. <laughs> people will say they're in Atlanta and like me, I'm in South Henry County and people says, oh, that's like going to, that's like going to Florida. Not quite. Y'all are coming, though. Y'all are coming. All right. Irresistible Pound Cakes in South Fulton. Welcome, Tracy West. All right. See my sister Trish Jones coming in. I got to, you know, I got to get some, some bumping music like Melvin. You know, Melvin got it going on in here. <laughs> Michael, get everybody kind of going. Um I thought about that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny about me. You know, I, I'm actually, uh, I used to be in the radio business. I love music. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep it, keep it low key today though. Rob's iPhone from Gwinnett. Brittany Edwards is with HSI Commercial, representing buyers and tenants looking for commercial space. All right. So let's jump into our, into our meeting this today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is our South Metro uh, kick off of our webinar series. My name is Miguel Lloyd. Um, I, I wear a couple of hats uh, here with uh, with the chamber. I've been a member for a long time. Don't remember how long, but it's been a while. Uh, and so about three years ago, we we started to get, put a little more focus on the South Metro. I'm based in Henry County. Uh, and Henry County, for those who may not know, is the fastest growing county in the state. Uh, and so if you're looking for somewhere to buy a home and, and, and try to spread out and get a little bit more room, Henry County may be a place you want to consider. Uh, so we've been doing our South Metro uh, networking events for the last couple of years, uh, but we've been getting a lot of requests. Hey, we got to do a little bit more things that are, that are a little bit more informative. We, we love the networking and it's a great opportunity to meet folks, uh, but we want to make sure we get an opportunity to uh, to learn some things as the chamber is doing such an effective job of doing that uh, today in a, a lot of a lot of ways. And so um, so we said, you know what, once a month, we're going to have a webinar. And and the, the first webinar we're going to have today is going to talk about being able to uh, survive post COVID uh, here in the restaurant and in restaurant industry. And Michael, let me let me first introduce myself. Michael Burr, introduce yourself, uh, Queen. Well, good afternoon, all. I am glad to be a part of this. My name is Micah Bird. I am a resident um, ATLN from Atlanta, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Mm. 
I have been doing accounting for over 30 years. I am a licensed um, public tax accountant, um, which is one of my fortes. And I've always wanted to make sure that I provide a service to individuals that look like me who are in this industry and other industries. I actually have a master's in business. And so business is one of the things that I thrive on just making sure that we survive in times that seem a little troubling. Um, and as we know now that some areas in business are struggling trying to maintain, although technically they've said we're out of COVID, they're still struggling trying to maintain um, survival, keeping the doors open. And so I'm here to make sure that I can either provide information for you or help to get you in a place where you can keep your doors open. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So um, real quick, we got, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we, uh, as you mentioned, if you want to join the Atlanta Black Chambers, you can go to our website, atlantablackchambers.org, and it's right there on the front page. Um, if you're not already a member or if you've been uh, coming to our events and, and you want to uh, have some of the benefits of being a full-fledged member, which includes access to our members-only Facebook page, uh, access to a, some, some members-only events, members-only pricing, uh, we do a lot of events that are for simply for the market, for the community, uh, but we do have some members only uh, stuff that that is an important part of uh, what we do. Um, one other thing I want to share with you, this is a big week. First week of the month is is kind of, uh, I do uh, most of the activity I have for the chamber is in the first week of the month. And on Thursday, I want you to get in, I want you to put this on your radar. I'm doing an interview with uh, Omar Ali. Omar uh, is a, a business owner. He actually sits on the board with the Advanced Back Business, uh, which is uh, another arm of the chamber. Uh, he's He and his father and his family are, are amazing business people in the market. But um, he was a part of the getting a, get a legislation that was uh, passed last week by the governor. And we're going to talk about that, about how it's going to help uh, minority-owned businesses in the community. So you need to put this on your radar, please. Next, This coming Thursday, 1 p.m. on Facebook. It'll be on Facebook, YouTube, as well as LinkedIn. Uh, for you to view wherever you like to spend most of your time. Uh, I encourage you uh, to go to our YouTube page where all of our interviews, prior interviews live. A lot of great interviews we've done in the last couple of years. And so it's a great opportunity for you to connect with us. All right. Well, I'm going to sit back uh, like you. I'm going to get my pen and paper together and uh, or, or digital pen and paper together, however way you like to take your notes. And uh, we're going to learn something today. So, uh, Michael, you have the floor, my sister. All right, I will get my presentation together so that I can share my screen. While Mike is getting ready, if you have any questions um, during the course of this, or if you brought any, please put them in the chat and we will get to them in the second half of our time together. Hold on one second. All right. All right. As I said earlier, my name is Micah Bird. I am a licensed public tax accountant. And by many of my clients, I've been coined as a tax guru. It's nice to have a little cliche name, but um, at the end of the day, I do like to provide um, information and services to make sure that you are acquiring and getting all the tax incentives and deductions that you need. So part of what I'll discuss today is a overview of what accounting is and trying to make sure this specific industry has the available resources. So we're gonna talk about financial statements, excise tax, sales and use tax, access and capital, the restaurant revitalization fund, and then the employer retention credit. I don't know which part of that you are interested in, but make sure that you have your questions ready for me. I'm here to answer them. And this is also a relaxed environment. I wanna make sure that I get your feedback and that I provide you with the tools that you need necessary to operate your business. So let's move forward. The first, financial statement. As you know, in this industry, having your accounting and or bookkeeping is extremely important. So having these resources, these financial statements are vital to access and capital. 
So the first financial is a profit and loss of one of my clients. It actually, profit and loss actual shows you, it tracks your um, restaurant revenue, your cost of goods sold, and your expenses. It helps show, to show you whether you are operating in a loss or in profit. Now, I don't know if this can be seen. So over here, we have the balance sheet. So your balance sheet is, you know, the overarching of view of your financial health of your restaurant. It provides you with the assets. It provides you with your liabilities, anything that you owe out and uh, or your debt and your equities, anything that you have to, you know, you put in and or you have to dispense out. I also want to uh, share that having these financial statements all together or prepared, done in a timely fashion allows you to be um, quick with making sure whether you know at the time you need funding. And we'll get to some resources that you'll be able to access when you have these financials ready. So excise tax is imposed on malt beverages, wines, distilled spirits, cigarettes, little cigars, and loose sm or smokeless tobacco. And those um, alcohol, the reports for the alcohol is due on the 15th, and then tobacco is due on the 10th. This is for the state of Georgia, as I'm not sure if everybody is from the state of Georgia, but if, if not, then um, I can always give you those actual due dates for other states. There's only a few that the dates vary. Now, with sales and use tax, I just want to move this over so that hopefully you guys can see this. Um, it's clear on the screen. You should be okay. It is clear. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, with sales and use tax, as it says, it's imposed on retail sales price for ta tangible and personal, uh, tangible personal property and certain services. So I'm going to give you an example of when sale tax kicks in. So if you're a seller and you charge $20 for a shirt and then $5 for the delivery of the shirt, the entire $25 is to um, is sales taxes imposed on the entire $25. Now, when use tax comes into play is if you're a contractor, um, you buy a specific equipment in another state and you pay that state sales tax and not the local sales tax, and you transfer that equipment to Georgia, you bring it to Georgia and you use it, then you are to pay the use tax, which is for Georgia's 4% on using the equipment in Georgia. Um, also, another thing about sales and use tax is if a taxpayer purchases um, taxable goods or services in Georgia without the payment of, of tax, the taxpayer must accrue and remit those taxes at the time that they're due. And in Georgia, all reports electronically are due on the 20th. And um, if you're going to file them by paper, they're due on the 19th. But I think Georgia is really trying to get away with paper more so uh, they want you to use it electronically. So access and capital. I did list only, and you'll see for, as we get further into it, three different type of um, funding institution, banking and funding institutions. But I want to um, address just some things about the different types of funds. So um, as it states here, small business loans are often called, uh, sometimes called term loans or short-term loans. 
And there are a lot of um, funding institutions that provide those micro, micro loans, um, as well as SBA provide more of a long-term, well, they do provide micro, fund, micro loans as well, but S, SBA as the loan administrator provides term loans. Um, and that can be micro loans, 50,000 or less, short-term loans or long-term loans, which would be a 7A loan or a 504 loan. But those depend, that 504 is more um, real estate equipment and or machinery. And one thing about the SBA loans, they are backed um, federally and they have the smallest amount of interest as of to date. I think the interest rate, if I looked correctly today, earlier today, it was around 2.75%. And I don't know if you can get any other loan in a uh, outside lending institution with that type of um, interest rate. Um, business line of credit is another area of funding that you can get that will insert funds uh, rather quickly if you're in need of it. And then a business credit card and purchase receivables. And I'll, I'll give you another um, financial institution that uses financial purchase receivables and how they are backed and why they are more um, maybe relevant or quick to access if you need a influx of funds quickly. So Cross River Bank Business is one of the banks that I work with rather closely. They do, they just, um, as of last year, open up their separate business section where they work as they are a um, preferred lender with SBA where they work with 7A loans, 8A, and then the 504. So they do provide those other SBA platforms. They also provide micro loans as well. So if you need any influx of funds that are 50K or less, they do have the capability of approving those loans as well. Um, APX funding is more of what I talked about, the purchase receivables. So which is really not a loan, is more of, you know, an advance. So, of course, typically those fundings are funneled through investors. However, you know, they don't have a whole lot of um, stipulations used in order to get funding if you need those uh, fairly quick. All right, um, the restaurant revitalization, the RRF, that was actually funded through the American Rescue Plan. And it was really um, sort of parallel as the PPP was for uh, other industries outside of restaurants to sort of provide them with funding um, fairly quick for those that will, you know, need to be able to keep their doors open and you know, there were the funds provided were able to uh, use for multiple things such as business payroll costs, payments on any business mortgage obligations, um, any business maintenance expenses, business utility payments, business operating expenses. So it covered quite a few things. Um, and that specific, the RRF was a fund that was not payable just as well as the PPP, as long as you use it for the allowable funds, some of the few that I just mentioned. The ERC, which is the um, Employer Retention Credit, this um, Pacific Credit, as it states, shows that for throughout 2020, if your, um, you retained your staff as employees. I, I know that, well, I'm familiar with some of the restaurant owners having individuals as 1099s. Um, that's different from being an employee. 
So I, I'm not going to get into that because I have to know your specific if you had individuals that you paid as a contractor. But the ERC specifically states for individuals that you kept on your payroll as an employee for throughout 2020 and first quarter, second and third quarter of 2021. So you were able to receive uh, or eligible to receive a refund of up to 5,000 per employee for all of 2020 and then up to 7,000 per em uh, employee on payroll for each quarter of 2021 from quarter one to quarter three. And if you total that per employee, you can get in, re in reimbursement of the employer taxes you paid up to 26,000 per employee if they remained on your payroll during that time frame. And so these funds are still available. However, what has to be determined and completed is making sure that you had a um, significant loss between the two years that I've mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, 2020 and 2021. And then your quarterly payroll return would have to be amended to show those employees that you kept from that time frame um, that they're still on your payroll and then make the adjustments on the return, the quarterly payroll, then you would be able to see the amount that you can get for each, pay, each employee that you kept on the report that was issued prior to. Um, also, I wanna talk about what's, who's eligible for it. So as the IRS mentioned um, recently, if an experienced significant decline in your gross receipts during 2020 or a decline in gross receipts during the first three quarters of 2021, that makes you um, eligible to receive the credit up to 26,000 per employee. So I'm at, right here, I'm gonna put a little pause in it. Are there any questions? So um, I think you may have asked one of the questions is that is the restaurant revitalization fund back in operation? Well, I read recently over the weekend that that is something on the agenda for Congress to discuss, but I do know that they have um, put some other things in front of it because from what I understand is that there were a lot of restaurants in certain communities that did not receive receive the uh, restaurant, the RRF, because this was actually supposed to be processed through your um, point of sale vendor. As long as they were a preferred vendor through um, um, SBA, they should have automatically processed this application for you. So if they, uh, is there any recourse or if it was not processed, do they have time to go back? No, not at this time until that decision, until a decision regarding Congress as, as much as how much money will be available. Got it. Uh, there's another question. When does the ERC expire? Currently the, uh, so to have it processed for this quarter, for the uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 of 2021 has not provided an expiration date, but they keep changing it. So there's a possibility that we won't have uh, much time left. Initially, it was sometime in March. So if you have not had that done, it's important to get right on it to have that have your 941s amended so that you can get those credits back. Okay. How much total fund is available in ERC? Um, I am unsure in terms of the actual amount, Mr. Alexander, but I will definitely find out for you. 
And we'll make sure, um, Mike, if you can put your contact information in the chat, um, you know, directly, and they can they can reach out to you if they want to dig deeper into this and get a consultation. Um, you mentioned about uh, when I think someone asked or in your presentation the difference between contractors and uh, 1099 employees versus employee model. Can you go a little bit deeper into that and, and for restaurants, you know, so they can make some decisions on whether or not they should put in some people, more people on their payrolls or not? Yes. So contractors, independent IDCs is what the IRS refers to them. You are processing them as a 1099. So they've given you a W-9, provided their information um, to you, and you are providing them with a check, a full check. No withholdings are coming out, whether that be their personal or you as the employer are taking out taxes. So what, so for the ERC, what you are being reimbursed is your employer per, uh, portion. So your social security um, portion as the employer and your Medicare as the employer is what you're being reimbursed as it relates to the employer retention credit. So, um, well, I don't wanna, if you have more presentation, but I do have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, just jumped in there in my head, but I'm gonna let you go to presentation and come at the end if you like, or if you wanna take that question now. No, you go ahead. This is Q&A time. I just left this up. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the um, what do we call it? The um, delivery services that are out there now. Um, are you aware of any uh, benefits or, or lack thereof? Because I know a lot of people who I talk about who are using delivery services or decided not to, they talk about how much of their monies that are kept by the delivery services. Are there any tax benefits or more ways for these restaurants to win with those relationships with the Uber Eats and the DoorDashes of the world? No, that's more related as like a merchant fee if it's on a service-based business. So that is a total expense. It should be on your books, a total expense out. So it's not really um, any other. You, the, the only incentive, if you want to look at it that way, is that you get to expense that out in your in, in that year you incur it. Got it. Okay. Um, so looking at, uh, and I'm familiar with quite a few people who are here, not all of them are restaurant owners. And so mm -hmm. have a little bit of time. Um, if you have any other kind of general tax um, uh, advice or, or things that you want to uh, expound on, and, and please, if you're here in the meeting and you have some questions, um, please drop them in the chat because uh, we do have a few more minutes. We want to make sure we're maximizing the time. Yes, please. I, um, any questions, I am here to answer. Even if it's not related to a restaurant, I will answer um, as quick as I can reply to it. And feel free, uh, if you want to unmute yourself one at a time, uh, and, and announce yourself, and then I'm going to, um, Micah, can you pull down your, do you have anything else left in the presentation portion? Um, no, just Q&A &A and then my contact information. So you can pull okay. it down if you want to. Okay, no problem. I um, think you'll have, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So if you have just, any questions or comments, please um, unmute yourself, announce yourself, and then uh, feel free to ask your question. That is correct. The um, ERC is still going. Um, as I stated, the date regarding it, and if that's, if, if you have seen that it says April 2024, that's new. Um, I didn't see that date. I didn't. I know the date has changed, but either way, it is important to get it processed immediately so that you can um, have those funds back. And of course, you're responding to uh, Rob's. Uh, this yeah. is the chat. Uh, my understanding, uh, it is Aruku. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hi, Rob. My understanding is that the PPP ran out of money, but the ERC is still going strong. It is scheduled to expire April 2024 for 2020 and in April 2025 for 2021. I, I'm, she, I'm lost there a little bit. <laughs> but so he's saying yeah, for, for the tax year 2020 is scheduled to, to expire, meaning your, your amended returns, your amended quarterly returns okay. should be in by April 24 for 2021. He's saying that it should okay. be in by April 2025. That's why we got wonderful professionals like you here. To Absolutely. That crystal clear. Great. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, any other questions or comments? Come on, you. I know you guys got questions. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me jump in. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, uh, Patrick. Um, Patrick Alexander, my company is Balambico, and I actually live in the Henry County area. <laughs> my business is Fayetteville, and um, we do website and digital marketing that works. And we have a number of clients in that in restaurants. Um, that's why okay. I'm on the web there. And the reason of asking is RC questions, I've spoken to a few accountants and my phone gets bombarded every day with this ERC stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, I guess the question I for is more for uh, an expertise, uh, from, from your expertise, what should we watch out for? I know obviously if you're here, you'll be one of the better persons to talk to you about the IRC, but all this telephone call that we can get in and all of these solicitations, right? What should we watch out for in terms of what might be able to be fraudulent? And that's why I ask about when does it expire, how much money is left, right? Because it seems like it's an arms race to get persons to sign up for it so that certain so viewers can benefit. So who is more? Apart from accountants, I, I guess, who, who should we trust, right? And who should my clients trust when speaking about this ERC stuff? I guess that's my question. Thank you. That's a, that's a tricky question only because one of my current clients um, had a prior CPA prior to myself. Um, and they were, well, I don't, I can't, I take that back. They weren't a CPA, a prior business um, individual sharing that they could prepare the ERC. So who can you trust? Um, it's really hard to say, but here's the thing. You must know, the individual should know that there is a two-part step. You must know whether, you must be able to determine whether they had a loss in that 2020 year to determine if they'll be eligible because that is part of it, as I mentioned it to you from the IRS. Um, so in order to do so, they must either already have their financials and for you as, or the individual to be able to determine per quarter what their loss was to allocate which, or the employees that they had on payroll at that time how many they will be able to get the full credit for. So in other words, what I'm saying is that they must be able to understand their financials prior to, to be able to determine the actual quarter um, of the 941, the payroll um, employer uh, form, what needs to be corrected to show how much they'll get back. If I may um, make a comment, please. Sure. Yeah, sure. My, yeah, my name is Iruku Makanga, and um, I, I work with uh, the ERC. I work with a company called Bottom mm -hmm. Line Concepts. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to answer uh, Mr. Alexander's uh, question about who to trust, because there's hundreds, if not thousands, of companies out there now that are working mm -hmm. the ERC. Um, <laughs> First rule of thumb that I have followed is a lot of times if they have ERC in their name, then they were created specifically for the ERC. And that's a red flag for me because that means that two years from now when the ERC goes away, be gone. Mm -hmm. they will be gone. Mm -hmm. And if anything ever comes up later from uh, the IRS, you will be on your own. Um, <clears throat> The, the company I partner with is 14 years old. Uh, they've done over $5 billion in ERC. Uh, they've been doing this for a long time and they'll be around another 14 years after the ERC is, is gone. Um, so that's, that's one red flag. Uh, I also wanted to mention, uh, Micah, that I have heard um, the IRS did make some changes later about eligibility. Mm -hmm. um, so the... The uh, you have to prove uh, loss uh, of revenue, mm -hmm. but there's an or clause, or you have to pr to prove what they call uh, operational hardship. Um, and for restaurants, you know, we're talking about things like having to uh, move your table six feet apart, 
so that you could handle uh, you know, clients in the restaurant and things like that. Uh, so there's another clause uh, in there that allows uh, companies, even those that have had um, profits, even those that had profits in 20 and 21, to be eligible for the uh, employee retention credit. A lot of these changes uh, were made after the new administration came into power. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to prove that I'll, I'll put my information on the chat if anybody has more questions, um, but it is still alive and the money has not run out. Um, it may run out, <laughs> we don't know that, but as of now it's still alive. And thanks for letting me talk. Thank you. My phone would ring during my meeting here. Uh, so a couple questions here uh, in uh, the chat. Are there any other funding opportunities for food services in Georgia? Um, not that I currently know of. I do know that Georgia um, established the RRF um, individually themselves because of the funds that they receive or finally released from um, what they received from the federal government, but I will definitely find out if there are any. And, and I, I saw someone else asked about a specific industry too, uh, yeah. a, a specific uh, line of bakeries. That's what yeah. I saw. Yes, it, it is. In there. And let's keep in mind and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Micah, mm -hmm. the distributed by the federal government to the states and to the counties. And so there may be other opportunities yeah, and specifically in the city or the county that you reside, where there may be opportunities for money that's sitting there uh, that you may want to pursue. So, um, and I I saw it here in Henry County where they were distributing some funds in Henry County back when uh, when the pandemic hit. So that would be part of my recommendation from a personal experience. I don't know if you want to expound on that, or we can we'll move on. I apologize. I was reading Miss Morning's um, message. Okay. Um, yes, in other counties, I will, of course, because when Georgia um, set up that, well, I don't want to say separate, but for Georgia, when they set up the RRF, mm -hmm. there were specific funding for different counties. So I will find out regarding. And what does RRF stand for? It is the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Gotcha. Okay. So when they received those funds, Georgia specifically set up Georgia RRF, and you can find it on, um, I believe, the Georgia Department of Revenue, if not the state of Georgia um, website. And uh, the comments you were referencing by Ms. Shanna Morning, business seeking the R ERC must represent that they meet certain eligibility mm -hmm. requirements if the business uses a PEL, which is professional employer organization. IRS rules clarify how the request can be made through the PEO but the client company is responsible for the determining eligibility for okay. the ERC. Um, that makes sense to you or? Uh -huh. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, uh, there's another question in the chat. What is a 7A loan? Um, 7A is similar to your, it's a long-term loan. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, it's one of the loans that's backed back by the SBA, Small Business Administrator. Okay. Uh, Patrick Alexander, what specific paperwork slash documentation is required for the ERC? So your financials, your actual um, profit and loss statement, your balance sheet and your cash flow to determine the amount of what the loss was in 2020 versus the current, the following year after that, and then your payroll reports that were submitted for those years. So for 2020 and for 2021. Um, and we still have a few more minutes, so drop your questions or comments in the chat. Uh, people say the restaurants are, are, are a tough industry uh, to keep open. Um, there's a lot of issues that a lot of uh, restaurant owners, no matter the race, uh, in the restaurant industry, what, are there any tax, um, uh, advice that you would give to some restaurant owners who may be struggling to keep their doors open, some opportunities or some lifelines? Um, I know you've gone over a few of them in the presentation, but some things that they may not be doing 
doing very well that's causing them additional uh, financial strife? Um, I noticed that with some of the ones that I work with, they are, you know, um, cutting back on maybe using some of the service, like the food services that they may have used prior to COVID. Um, they're doing a lot more of their own shopping, whereas they are paying taxes on upfront versus using the food services where they're not paying taxes on it and have to um, submit those sales sales and you sales and use tax reports on what they didn't actually pay taxes on. So they are having less sales and use tax amount to have to report or pay into the state of Georgia. Um, I don't know if I recommend that. However, I understand when you are um, operating in a fashion of bootstrap and you're trying to keep the doors open, you're looking at ways to not have to spend out so much money in terms or, or disperse so much money in terms of fees that you have to pay in your industry. Um, other ways are, you know, if you are looking to switch up your staff, if you, you know, if you want to move some of those to independent contractors, however, in your industry, it is sort of tricky because as a IDC, you can't provide them with a set time to come and go. Um, they have to give you their time. They're more independent as they are employer. So people are looking at ways to cut back on staffing, in other words, is what I'm referring to. So the money that they spend in taxes, staffing, um, um, more are reducing or providing more services to their consumers, such as um, events, whether that be a special night, a special day of um, certain items on their list, they're looking to either push those more that they're not actually selling. So there are multiple ways you can look to try to see what you have to do um, to keep your doors open. It's like any other industry or and or you look to add something that might bringing in uh, more consumers or, you know, but less cost on your end. So you mentioned uh, events um, and, and, you know, a couple of things, you said a couple of things during, during, during that time right there. One, it sounds to me, you're saying when people are cutting their costs uh, by not, as you mentioned, shopping on their own in comparison to maybe having a food vendor, bringing the food in, they may be saving money on the front end, but from a tax uh, benefit standpoint, that they may not be winning as much as they as much as they want, right? Correct. Based on what you're saying. Second thing you mentioned about events. Um, let's just say that someone, for example, uh, is hosting an event for an organization like the chamber, uh, where there may be no cost for them initially up front, but they are offering up their facilities for 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 free or for gratis. Are you saying that that is also a potential tax benefit for that business? And if so, how do they how do they what sort of paperwork or how, what sort of ledger of things should they be keeping in order to keep track of that? So if they're hosting an event, when, when you're having an event, um, of course, depending on the event, you know, you can either have 100% of that as a tax deduction. Those things should be recorded in your accounting. So if I'm hosting an event and I am actually having to provide certain things for the event, those things that you're providing in your restaurant, whether that be your signage and or making sure that I have additional um, uh, wings, chicken wings, whatever your restaurant business is, mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the event, those things can be 100%. Um, tax deductible, but that's included in your accounting. So, it. so it's nothing that you should actually step outside to acquire. You just need to make sure that the accounting is done correctly. So if you allocate, let's just say you assign two or three servers to that party, the hours that are dedicated to that event should be, should allocated. be, should be allocated to that event. It should be, uh, 
So Absolutely. Okay, gotcha. Hope that's helping some folks out here who may be in the space. Um, Me too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we have about 15 more minutes, uh, but we're not going to keep you guys. If you guys don't have anything, any questions for us, we've got this wonderful woman with all these letters behind her name <laughs> <laughs> who is here with all of this experience. I hope that you all take advantage of this time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as we mentioned, we are here in the South Metro. Well, this is a South Metro hosted event. Um, tomorrow night, we will be at Sudo's Bar and Grill during our monthly uh, networking event. If you want to meet uh, each other, uh, make sure you come on out to Sudo's tomorrow, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, and, and we'll be there until about till about 8 or so. Um, we also are starting a second networking event that will be um, at JR Crickets uh, in McDonough. And, and Micah, you want to talk a little bit about that? And, and I know you kind of came to me with that. I love the idea. I mean, people think the South Metro is, is pre South Metro is pretty big. Henry County is pretty big. Yeah. Uh, we go to Sudo's is actually um, a little bit closer to the cab. So it's North um, Henry County, whereas uh, the event at JR is going to be right off of exit 216, right down here in McDonough. Uh, and it's a quick access off the interstate, but feel free to expound on that a little bit. So, um, Yes. So J.R. Crickets McDonough is actually one of my clients. And um, as I stated, I, I live in Henry County as well. It's important for me to have these type of establishments not far from my doorstep. So not only do I patronize it, I want to make sure that it survives because mm -hmm. it means a, a great deal about what my property will look like and the value it would have have long term. So um, May 15th, we're having their first um, mixer. Is that right for me to call it a mixer, a business we can call mixer? It. Sure, 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 <laughs> well, where I um, would definitely, you know, be proud to have you guys come. They offer the best food. I'm sure you probably have been to a JR Crickets is more than just wings. Um, this particular owner for me actually does a lot more for this establishment and he's been down here since 2018 and so I just want to see it survive um, and outside of my professional services as a consumer I want to make sure that it survives yes uh, Patrick it is GI cricket in crickets in McDonough yep off of 155 off of 155 that'll be exit 216 off of I-75 uh, if you're coming from uh, coming from towards the city. And, and that's one thing uh, I, I really invite you all, if you have not spent much time in the South Metro, uh, if you don't come below I-20, I encourage you to, to, to come to, to come south. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of activity going on. There's a lot of construction. There's a lot of growth. I've had some conversations uh, recently. Uh, the South Metro initiative was, was spearheaded uh, initially, uh, when I was approached uh, by by D. Clemens and Bruce Holmes, uh, current county commissioner D. Clemens, former current county commissioner D., uh, Bruce Holmes, and then now even Vivian Thomas, who is still uh, one of the commissioners in Henry County. There's a lot of construction. There's a lot of building going on. There's a lot of homes being built, which means there's a lot of money to be made in the South Metro. And so I would encourage you guys, if you're not spending much time in the South Metro, uh, come on down here to the South Metro to a couple of events that we've been hosting and you will get your eyes opened wide um, to, to see what exactly is going on down here in the South Metro. So that will be going on tomorrow. As you mentioned, on May 15th, we'll be at JL Crickets. Well, let me back up and not confuse you. Tomorrow, we will be back at Sudo's. We've been there for three years. We'll be there uh, on tomorrow night from six to eight. On May 15th, we will once again, uh, for another mixer, we'll be at um, uh, JL Crickets in McDonough. Um, and in between that, uh, we do, uh, we will have this webinar series that will come back around to see us. Uh, and we're going to probably do it on Tuesday. So Tuesdays is going to be uh, South Metro Day. Uh, so we'll have our webinar at, on Tuesdays uh, around the same time at 2 p.m. And then in the evenings, we'll have our mixer, which will start at six o'clock. And then we will uh, do our introductions and any presenters we'll have will be at a, right around seven o'clock. We're going to give you opportunities to get through the traffic because there is no place in Atlanta, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's not traffic to get where you're going. Yeah, that's those it. days are over. It's we are a mini LA and yeah. whatever else you want to call. So just perfect strap up. Patrick says he lives about 10 to 15 minutes from there. Great. So, so do I. Uh, and not like 40 minutes of going to Sudos 
mm-hmm. which so we're going to love uh, being able to connect here in the South Metro uh, at Sudo's Bar. And then those wings are pretty good. So yeah. if you like, you like wings, they got some great wings there. Uh, looks like somebody's waiting to come in and we'll let them in. Okay, any other questions or comments? Um, we've had some great dialogue. I appreciate some of the other professionals in the room. Yeah, me too. To uh, offer some context and and yeah, to to what we needed uh, here from the group. All right. You want to close out, uh, Micah? Anything else you want to share? Um, I, when Mr. Melvin took his um, mute off, I'm, I was thinking he was getting ready to say something. He, he already uh, sent me a message to say he didn't. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and full disclosure, Michael, I sent Miguel a message earlier saying, hey, I'm going to be on, but you know, I'm not going to say anything, you know? Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I'm always willing to pass the mic. I said, he said he didn't want to talk, so I'm going to let him chill. But, but go no, ahead. No, 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 no. Michael was, was, she's so, you know, powerful with uh, with the knowledge and we we appreciate her being a part of the organization. She represents what the ABC is all about. You hear me talk about uh, black subject matter experts, uh, black intellectual capital, but that this is what intellectual capital is, you know, is what's going on in her brain that makes her uh, wealthy and valuable. Um, so Absolutely. thank you, Micah, uh, for You're representing. You, you, you represent the South Metro, you know, the South Metro like, like, like to get their props. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and thank you to, uh, to those, those folks who showed up. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a solid turnout. You know, we did, we did market this uh, to a specific group. So, so, this, is, so this is good. We, we appreciate you all. Um, I wanted to come on to say we, we did confirm tomorrow, Tuesday Talks, uh, uh, T. Dallas uh, Smith, Miguel, and I, I wanted okay. to make sure everybody knew um that he will be he'll be speaking on tuesday talks tomorrow and, and i would hope that that everybody would uh would tune in for that yeah uh, on tomorrow absolutely and 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 melvin did that for though we just assumed everybody uh, you know melvin's like puffy you know everybody knows puff but uh, <laughs> but mel, mel, mel is our ceo of the chamber uh he's everything chambers over there any any people in here who may not be familiar that's who the voice you just heard and t dallas smith of t that t dallas t dallas smith is a commercial real estate giant here in the Atlanta Atlanta market, and so once again, uh, the chamber is bringing you uh, the best and the brightest, and and it's a great opportunity to jump in tomorrow morning at eight thirty for Tuesday talks. Melvin, you still there? Okay, I right, might have muted himself. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 still here. Did you need you need something else? No, yeah. no, absolutely not. No, I want to make sure you got you you got you got a chance to share uh, all all that you had. All right, team. Well, we appreciate every last we appreciate every last one of you guys for uh, for for jumping in. Let's real quick. I want to make sure we know once again, folks that are in the room. If you some of you have dropped your businesses in the chat um, mm-hmm. before I close out, drop them in there because we're going to go them real quick. We have William Teller from Paychecks, Tracy West, Irresistible Pound Cakes in South Fulton, mm-hmm. uh, Balimbico. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right, Patrick. Uh, digital marketing uh, that works. Um, Brittany Evers with HSI Commercial, uh, representing buyers and tenants looking for commercial space. Uh, we have Legal Shield, my man Carl Callan. What's up, my brother? Legal Shield and David Allen Capital out of Buckhead. We have Nia Jackson McClure, Trends in Commercial Capital, uh, Impact Health Sharing. So as we saw, Michael, we, we we marketed this to the restaurant community, but we have a lot of folks who are not. And we mm-hmm. them. Uh, so make sure you share this with this this uh, content will be up in the members only. Facebook okay. group here soon. So you can uh, you can check that out and share it with your restaurant friends. We are working on an initiative that we have been working on for the last two years. And I think it's time to pull the trigger. And, and I believe wholeheartedly there's a lot of restaurant folks that we need to connect with, but they're not going to be mm-hmm. able to jump on meetings like this all the time. Right. They're working in their restaurants. And so we're going we're, we're working on an initiative where we can we can uh, provide things like this content and, and opportunities to help their businesses. But we're also going to be uh, uh, producing some restaurant stickers potentially that can go in their windows so they can display yeah. their proud members of the Atlanta Black Chambers. And so, and then, and soon we'll be wanting to go around similar to uh, and uh, Melvin, if you're still there, uh, the, we talked so much about the Bomb Biscuits, Biscuits experience, uh, which did really, really well. And they changed the locations. I drove by there one time recently. I said, this place is bustling. Um, but this is what we want to do. We want to make sure that we can come as a group and support these businesses as a group. And so if you know of any restaurants and talk to everyone here, if you know of any restaurants you need to benefit of knowing about the chamber, please have them send an email to info 
at atlantablackchambers.org. We want to make sure that we're serving every part of our community. Um, before we go, I have one yes. thing I yes, would like please. to chime in. Um, I know we were talking about funding earlier, um, mm -hmm. and I have to find this email, but I know the city of East Point, I believe, is giving some funds to businesses coming to that area as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm waiting to get like the pamphlets and the brochures, but I have a restaurant client that is actually in that area. Um, and we've been working with them on a new development that's down there. And so um, that's an opportunity to y'all's point, go to the cities in which you are, because a lot of times they have funding kind of similar how, how um, people talk about um, down payment assistance and stuff like that for residential. Mm -hmm. There's stuff like that for your commercial business as well. Um, so just tap into that. Once I get the information, I don't mind um, sharing it with you guys as well. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. There are 159 counties in the state of Georgia. Yeah. And so this money has been distributed uh, to these counties. And, and so um, Micah doesn't know about all of those. We don't know about all mm -hmm. of those. We live in, in, in one of the 30-something counties in the Atlanta metro. We encourage you to go to your own county's website, search for that uh, opportunity, and ask the right questions because there may be money sitting there that you're not taking advantage of. Um, Candace Early, we are a commercial heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and appliance repair and service company located in Metro Atlanta. Uh, let me see who else we got here. Robert's Sauce. You get Robert's Sauce. I don't know. Um, you just put your website there. I don't know if it's a barbecue sauce or a marinade, but I love the grill. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to put that up. Uh, hi, everyone. Dr. Lisa Richardson from Main Street Martech, content and marketing operations agency based in Douglasville. Dr. Shell Soul Food Kitchen and Catering. Uh, who else we got here? We got D. Smith, President and Pitmaster of Rolling Smokes Barbecue and mm -hmm. Vending located in Conyers. So you're kind of South Metro. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Trish. We have Trish, uh, our girl, uh, her, her and her uh, wonderful husband. They have Venue to Go, uh, which is a space where you can find space uh, for you to rent for different events and, and, and things of that nature. And so they say the website will be back up in about two weeks. We have Insperity, uh, PEO HR Benefits, and that's Shannon, uh, Shanna Morning. She has great insight earlier. Thank you for that. Sweet Lovers, uh, Sweet Lovers Co. is the website. And there's a whole lot more here. Uh, now mm -hmm. I, started, I can't stop. I got to read everybody's now because I stopped. I can't stop now. <laughs> uh, Marky Darlings, a Daddy's Girls Barbecue and Catering out of Riverdale. Let me see, make okay. sure I miss anybody here. I think that's everybody. Um, uh, Aruku, uh, I want to get his name right. Aruku Makanja, if you're still there, make, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, his Good Scent Enterprises uh, is here. And it's he Aruku Makanga, sorry. Uh, Aruku Makanga, thank you, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And what, what, what country are you originally from, sir? Kenya. Kenya, mm -hmm. all right. Welcome, my brother. And then, thank of you. course, Michael Bird, who did the wonderful presentation today. Our information is in the chat. Make sure you guys save this chat and reach out to these folks and make sure you connect. Uh, and I didn't put my own information. I put my own information in the chat before we close out. Uh, my company is Lloyd Media Group. We, we uh, specialize in integrated communication solutions and we would love to be a service to you all as well. All right, Mike, you got anything else before we, before we get out of here? Yes. So it, it wouldn't be right if I didn't share on all social media platforms. You can reach me at I am Micah Bird. Um, again, I provide full accounting services to small to medium sized businesses, meaning no more than 500 employees. And that that has a huge wide span. Um, we make sure that the full spectrum you. So we act as your outsource accounting firm. Um, on that small to medium sized business platform. So again, if you need me, if you have questions, I do have a get acquainted 15 minute free phone call where we can address some things really quick that you might have um, to see where you need to fall as it relates to accounting and or taxes or actually looking for funding as well. So um, I'll have all that information shared in the um, webinar. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for giving us a part of your, your afternoon. Uh, we're right almost at the top yes. of the hour, so we want to make sure that we give you part of the rest of your day back. But thank you so much for tuning in. Michael, thank, thank you, you so much for the information and being so detailed. 
uh, and hopefully we can find ways to continue to do business together. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.